Today on CityCast Denver, young people are the future. That's literally how life works. So how well is Denver doing winning the hearts and minds of today's youth? One new study says we're doing pretty good, but we can't just take livingcozy.com's word for it. We've got a very real and very cool young journalist on the show today to talk through that and all the other local stories that mattered this week. Today is Friday, March 3rd. I'm Paul Caroli, and here's what Denver's talking about. Welcome back to CityCast Denver, the show about the city that is celebrating whatever 303 day is. <laughs> Bree? Bree's here? Our yeah. regular host? Yeah. Bree, 303 day, do you care? I mean, it's cool. Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking like if I wanted to do something really my Denver style, maybe I'd get like a Santiago's burrito, get in my car. Absolutely Santiago's. Mm. Cruise from... I don't know, Havana and Colfax all the way down to Casa Bonita. Listen to 303. Beautiful. Although I was reading the 303 article, uh, the How to Celebrate 303 article from cover story from Westward this week. And um, apparently the cheeseburger is supposed to have been invented here. So I've heard this rumor, yeah. I may double up Santiago's breakfast burrito and a cheeseburger from Good Times. Hell yeah. Like one at one end and then one at the other end of my cruise because mm-hmm. cruising is my most favorite thing about Denver and yeah, and listening to 303, of mm. course. My friends, 303, that we can't get on this show. <laughs> they Sean, don't us. Matt, if you're listening. They're selling out all pl- over the country. <laughs> please come on the show. We want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, those guys are, they've settled into a really interesting place in their career. I have to say too, especially knowing that they started as a joke party band on MySpace mm-hmm. and then actually became like recording artists who sell records and tour and and do all of that. They're also, well, also I would say Sean was in a acapella group in high school. So he is a singer, mm. but um. Yeah, I don't know. I have love for them. I know that it's a controversial band I like to like. Them too. But. I, I think their recent stuff is cool too. Like they did this really weird song. I mean, we'll talk about Gen Z later today, but they did a song with Rebecca Black. Oh, that's right. And Big Frida. Yeah, that's right. This, I totally like, forgot really about that. really weird cover of Rebecca Black's Friday, but like, anyway, well, They have it's a sense of humor. They have they a do. sense of humor. They and do. I would say my favorite music from them is not really available legally on the internet so much as their old MySpace stuff, which is my favorite song is I'm not coming to your party girl. Mm. So mm. if you, if you can, de- if you can dig deep, you can find that song, but yeah, 303, love them. 303 is the best, the best. As for me, 303 day, I have decided not to celebrate this year. Instead, I'll be celebrating transplant day on uh, July 20th, <laughs> 720. That's what I decided. Oh man, I have a 720 number because I had to change my phone number when I was mm-hmm. like 20 because <laughs> my boyfriend and I broke up and you couldn't take your phone number with you if you got a new cell phone plan. So, well, you can celebrate with us transplants if you want. <sighs> okay. I mean, I love You're you invited. all. Yeah. I love you all. <laughs> Um, All right. Well, we got to get into it because it's Friday and uh, we're here at the Westward office in person recording. We're talking about uh, the local stories that matter this week. And we have a really special guest joining us from the TJ Journal. She's a reporter and senior at Thomas Jefferson High School. Shana St. Fart is here. Shana, welcome. Hi. Thank you guys for having me. Shana, 303 day. How do you feel about it? You're going to celebrate? I literally do not know what that is. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I don't blame you. I almost just Googled it while sitting here. <laughs> yeah, what did you learn? Nothing. Or, nothing at all. Well, Bree, how do we explain it? It's like uh, it's like the Denver Day. Yeah, it's like seen holiday. as a Denver Day. So yeah. a long, long time ago, when they were first doling out area codes, all of Colorado was 303. I also learned this from the Westward story. Um, and so it, the area code is sort of become a signal for if you have a 303 phone number still it's like your old Denver or you happen to get one of the random recycled ones Mm -hmm. but as we've grown then we got a 970 719 720 and then there's a new area code 983 which Mm -hmm. I think we figured out spells WTF yeah which is great which is great so that's where 303 comes from that's why 303 day is Denver day okay I I was like when I was really young, I got a 303, but then uh, now I'm 720. Same. Mm. Yeah. Same. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I won't have to change to a WTF. <laughs> 
I know. We'll see. If you have a WTF number, let us know. Uh, we'd love to know what that feels like. I don't know. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's get into our, our top story of the week. Um, Shana, we've been wanting to have you on for a while, but then this came across the desk and it was like, oh, this is perfect. Um, it's a new study from livingcozy.com. And according to them, Denver is the third best city in the country to be Gen Z. That's based on factors like the people to mental health provider ratio, internet connection prevalence, gender pay gap, job listings, internet privacy scores, stuff like that. Um, so it got us thinking about young people in the future and the Denver that people are growing up in now. And uh, Shane, I don't know. What do you think? F top level thoughts about the study. How, how do you feel about it? It makes sense to me. Um, my mom actually decided to move from New Jersey, New York to Colorado to have me because of old statistics about 18 years ago, given that I'm 18 years old, hmm. um, based on childcare providing and the kind of more balance of rural and city and sure. just being able to like provide well, like child support. And so, but now as I'm like getting older, I'm looking at colleges and I'm looking at places that I want to go and I'm comparing them all to Colorado because that's where I live. And I'm seeing trends of, oh, this place in New York doesn't have good places for teens or like for new adults that I appreciate more now because I'm looking at basically new places to live forever. Does that maybe make you think you would stay in Colorado for school? Staying in Colorado for school is a really good idea for me for several reasons. I want to be a journalist, which is... Uh, not the most high paying job. No, um, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. And I just got into the CU journalism program at Boulder and I'm getting a lot of in-school tuition. I'm getting in-state tuition. And when I'm comparing it to other schools, it's not as good. They're also going to take hopefully my college credit. And so that takes thousands of dollars off of tuition that I would be paying anywhere else. So financially, Colorado would make sense. But what about these other factors that they've put in here, like mental health provider mm -hmm. to people ratio or internet connection? Like, are these things that you all are thinking that you and your friends think about? I mean, I know mental health is a huge thing for Gen Z. I think you all are really good at talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that is really a Denver thing? I think the culture around mental health in Colorado is really positive. I feel like it's really prevalent. Hmm. I haven't, in in class, people are talking about, oh, maybe I want to go to therapy, and it's not stigmatized. Yeah. There are definitely places probably like in the gym, like in the football room where I'm not present, where these conversations are still stigmatized. Um, but in journalism, when we have free time, people are talking about their latest therapy session or their name dropping therapists wow. like Nikita. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, OK. And so being on a first name like, oh, yeah, my therapist told me this. And people are really in touch with especially I think it's because of social media, TikTok, a bunch sure. of other things. I I was able to figure out I had ADHD like I talked about because other people were talking about it on TikTok. And so then those streams go into conversations. And so I feel like it's really prevalent. The culture is really good. And I, I wouldn't say mental health provider ratios really matters as much because everything is online. Right. Mm. That's what I was thinking about yeah. too. That like, you know, the rise mm -hmm. of better help and those. Oh yeah. Every single things. ad I get on YouTube <laughs> is. <laughs> Same. Maybe you should see a therapist. I'm like better help. I understand. And I assume a bunch of other people in the country are getting those same things. And there's the I Matter movement in Colorado. Tell me about that. What is that? It's a really good program. So at one point, I was on a panel for suicide prevention in um, Colorado. And the I Matter, as I read it from their site, is... The iMatter program can connect you with a therapist for up to six free virtual counseling sessions. Free therapy? Free therapy. Six. 
If we know anything about therapy, I think the barrier for a lot of folks is cost, especially if you don't have insurance or don't have great insurance. Mm -hmm. So it's a program for youth to get up to six free sessions. That's awesome. That's like a state funded program. That's Uh, really cool. Yeah, it is. So maybe that is, I think that's probably weighing into this study, Paul. I think absolutely. This is so different from when I was in high school when I was like these kinds of conversations, the stigma was... I mean, it didn't even come up. We just didn't even talk about it. If a this young person had a therapist and people knew about it, it signaled that something was really something wrong is with wrong. you. Like you're in therapy? Yeah, like what's going on in yeah. your family life, mm-hmm. which it was not at all the case probably, but those were the assumptions that folks made. I agree, Paul. I never thought about that, but it mm. was super stigmatized. Mm-hmm. Um, Brie, here's a question for you. Denver last year was number 10 on this list. We've moved up to number three. When you look around, do you see a Denver that's getting more hospitable to young people? I don't. I don't know what it would have changed in the last year. I mean, other than maybe this transition out of pan- more heavy pandemic concerns. Maybe Roe v. Wade, reproductive uh, health care access. Yeah, Ooh. that's I mean, true because we have that. that. When a lot of places don't, Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of conversation right now about, especially it continues, surrounding states with these laws and regulations that are limiting or cutting off abortion access at all is really pushing folks into Colorado. And our providers are overwhelmed to begin with, but maybe that is upping the the numbers here in terms of like, we have it, others Mm -hmm. don't. Could be. That's a great point. Could be. Uh, Shani, you mentioned uh, TikTok. Oh, yes. I've been obsessed with TikTok lately. I love TikTok. It's so bad. You do? Okay, (laughs) great. Okay, perfect. Because that's something that Denver is doing that, you know, could change how people use this app, whether they use it at all. I mean, uh, the city government just recently banned it from publicly owned devices. Our senior senator, Michael Bennett, is calling it for it to be removed from the app store completely. I think he wants it to just be banished from the face of the earth. That's the impression I got when he was on our show earlier this week. What What do you think? I mean, do you hear, what do you think would be the impact on on people at, at Thomas Jefferson, your community, if t- TikTok went away? I'd get my homework done on time. <laughs> uh, a lot. It's a short answer. That's what would happen. Um, I, I, I hate to say it. Banning TikTok isn't going to do anything. Like, remember when Vine died? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know how reels exist? Yeah. There's, respectfully, if people want short media content that fills them with giddy joy or informs them, even Snapchat now, they all steal from each other. They're basically all the same app in different platforms. If you want to ban TikTok for, and I actually didn't listen to Mr. Bennett's like rationale mm-hmm. other than probably a security threat and, yes, you know, that's China big runs it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Kids know that and we don't care. <laughs> um, so respectfully, it, take my data. I want to listen to little cat videos. And I did a program at, um, oh, has such a pretentious name, Gifted Education Research Institute, Jerry. <laughs> oh, terrible name. And I call it nerd camp so that people just don't judge me so heavily for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned about the dark side of social media. Uh, that was the course name. And I came out of that being like, oh, my data is taken from everything that I do everywhere. Regardless of whether it's TikTok or Regardless not, Regardless right? of whether it's TikTok or not. And Google's doing it. Everyone's doing like there's you log not, on to the yes. internet. It's following you everything, and mm-hmm. that's like been your whole life, right? Yeah. When, can I ask what year you were born? Oh, 2004. Right. So that is, uh, I was on social media in 2004. You were born mm-hmm. into this. So do you feel like the focus on TikTok is just ignoring the larger problem? Focusing. Yeah. Like, what do you? How do you see that? Um, people like to demonize the new thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like there are a lot of different places where. Really, companies companies buy it. And there's, not to get like too technical, but Snowden, mm-hmm. he told everybody, yeah, we can see your data. And that was before TikTok. Right. Um, if the FBI wanted my information, they could have it. Like there are so many different ways that they could just get it, no mm-hmm. matter what I do. And TikTok, honestly doesn't contribute that much to that already ever-present spying, basically. The data collection. Yeah, the data collection. That's already happening. That's fair. Yeah. Hmm. 
So here's another issue that um, our friends at livingcozy.com decided to uh, <laughs> exclude from their study. But I feel like climate change is a huge thing for Gen Z, right? I mean, this is the generation that's leading the charge on making changes. Do you, when you, also, we just learned Vice President Kamala Harris is coming to Denver on Monday to uh, to talk about climate change and Colorado's efforts to combat climate change. So I, I don't know, what what do you think your peers would want her to say? What do you think would make young people in Denver happy to hear from our vice president when it comes to the climate? Oh, we're going to do something to make it better. Mm. We're going to hold large companies accountable. I'm tired of my reusable straws. Um, and shout out Mr. Butera, my AP environmental science teacher. We have to... Teachers aren't allowed to share their political opinions, basically, which mm -hmm. is a little interesting when you're teaching an environmental science course, when climate change becomes a political issue. And he's like, no, I actually have to teach you this for the standards. And there are climate change deniers. And I'm hmm. I'm like, you're not allowed to speak your opinion. So let me speak mine like pretty freely um, as a student, as a student. Um, I believe in climate change. Ugh, sorry. That it exists. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it exists. And every single time I look at what individuals can do, I'm like, oh, yes, I can do this. I can change my light bulbs. I can do all of this. And I'm like, why is the government subsidizing coal? Um, that's a huge thing. Colorado has done a really good job about incorporating new renewable energy. And Ultimately, renewable energy is the way to, one, get more jobs. It, it takes about, I don't know the statistics off of my head, might be on a new quiz that I'm going to learn. So, <laughs> uh-oh. Um, it takes less people to run a coal mine than it does to actually sustainably run a renewable like windmill. Oh, there's, interesting. Yes. There's new jobs that are produced because of building, manufacturing, and continuing to run windmills. Uh, that's just one off the top of my head. So would you would you love to hear VP Harris like speak to that? Because I think what I'm hearing you say is like, I'm always being told what I'm supposed to do as a consumer to be more green, yes. right? But then we're not stupid, right? You see what else is happening. So maybe if the government was better at acknowledging this is a problem that not just me as an individual needs to solve. Yeah. But- Let's talk about the larger, the larger corporations. I would impact. really love to hear Miss Harris talk about things that the federal government would support from our local. And it's, I, it's too much to ask for. It's too much to ask for because <laughs> uh, of political polarization. But I want more politicians and people to take accountability and not just say, oh yeah, you're using plastic, stop, uh, use more renewables. I want them to say, hey, we see this issue and we're going to do something at a systematic level to change it and provide more jobs and work bipartisanly because I feel like there's a way for a lot of Republican concerns being like, well, it's going to cause less jobs. It's going to do all of these things and address those concerns. I don't think that a lot of the environmental concern should absolutely push those ideas away. I feel like it should be like an understanding of here are your concerns and we've taken those into account and we are going to do something environmentally conscious to address both of these issues at the same time because there's ways to do that. And I don't want it to seem like Kamala Harris is just catering to like the liberals of Colorado because we're a pretty blue yeah. state. I want there to be like more addressing of yeah, both sides, more addressing of both sides while also saying we have to take care of our environment. It's not a Republican thing to be like, oh, yeah, let's kill the environment. But it is a Republican thing to say we want more jobs. We want more jobs. We want mm. our people to be supported, which you can do while taking care of the environment. Hmm. That's a good point. Hmm. I'm just happy you all exist. And I'm glad you're putting pressure on <laughs> our government officials to do the things that we've been asking them to do for a long time, too. Yeah. I think 
it seems like you all are really, really strong on it. Yeah. That's awesome. I would love to be more strong on it, but my main focus is definitely racial and education issues. Sure. But there's a good sustainability club at our school. So there's they, folks they do, working on it. There's friends. folks working yeah. on it. Yeah. We did a Trunk or Treat Street, uh, like hosted by Black Student Alliance, and we got all of the clubs together and it gets the community involved and kids come by, we give them treats and people learn more about our clubs and it gets the community involved in the high school at Thomas Jefferson. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, here, here's a question I have for you, Shana. Downtown is an issue that we talk about a lot uh, on our show just because it's not as lively as it once was. Uh, commuters haven't really gone back after the pandemic. Late night diners are going away. I'm just curious, wh what is, does Gen Z care about downtown? Do young people want to go downtown and hang out? Sometimes. What's down there for you? Uh, rock climbing. There's rock climbing down here. Oh. There's like cool little places. I like the bookstores down here. Um, what is downtown? Like, Good question. I think that's a yeah. great question. Because like some people think of downtown and they think of Capitol Hill area like you're yeah. talking about. And then some people think of like the Denver pavilions yeah. and the 16th Street Mall. Mm -hmm. and But I would agree. I don't know if there's much for young folks to do down there. There's really not. You know, it's, even when I was a kid or like when I was a teenager, we went to the Paramount Cafe and smoked cigarettes. That yeah. was pretty much it. Or yeah. I went to Paris on the Platte and smoked cigarettes. Both of those places are gone now. 16th Street Mall? You're not, people aren't like walking up and down 16th Street Mall as oh, an activity? Gosh, no. I take people there when they want to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like when I have like people who are like, oh, like what's Colorado all about? I take them to 16th Street Mall and I'm like, here's the place. That I'm supposed to take you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can see the mountains at the end of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Which is cool. I was just having a talk with my partner about he was pooping on Colorado, and I was like, yo, don't poop on Colorado. That's so mean. So what did he say about Colorado? He was like, I was talking to like some of my classmates. One of them like lived there for five years, and he said there just wasn't much to do there, and it was like really flat. I was like, what do you mean it's flat? We're <laughs> part yeah. – yeah. I mean, there are the high plains, to be fair. But yeah, and I was like, are you talking about the, the mountains? I didn't take him to the mountains. Mm. Uh, he's not a mountain guy. I thought he would die. It, Maybe you need to introduce him to the mountains. I think Gina. I have to take him to the mountains. But the thing is, I'm also not a mountain person. <laughs> Understandable. Understandable. And so I was like, well, I took you downtown and into the city. He was like, yeah, the city's good. But like, there's it's just a city. It's like flat. There's nothing going on. I was like, I don't think that's true. But I was like struggling to come up with things. I was like, the Colorado Springs. I like those. I think I'm I'm a city person and it has a city. It, there's mountain people. People go mountain biking. People go hiking. I think the culture is really cool. Everybody is like, oh, what did you do this weekend? Oh, I went skiing. I, I don't like being cold. I don't go skiing. But there's a bunch of places where you can be outside and also have access to a city. I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, that's so don't poop on my city. It's, <laughs> it's good here. All right. Well, we got a little bit of business to do ourselves. We're going to go to a quick ad break. And then we're going to be back with something else. All right, and we're back. We're going to do one of uh, one of our favorite segments here for the back half of the show, overlooked stories of the week. So we each we each brought one something that we thought was overlooked or underreported this week, and we want to share and talk about. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a friend about uh, you know just what's up, and they had gotten <laughs> perhaps, you know, perhaps, yeah. um, and they were like uh, really into raffles. Like buying raffle tickets? Like buying raffle tickets because they wanted to win a dream house. Apparently there was this big raffle happening and they were like, I'm going to win. If I buy enough tickets, I'm going to win. And they like had this mindset, very focused. Um, this is not for me, but I thought when I saw this story this week from Nine News, not only does this person need to know, but I think other people probably need to know too. So Nine News, Marshall Zellinger reports, the Boys and Girls Club of Metro Denver, their annual Mile High Raffle, are you familiar? Have either of you heard of this? I vaguely remember, yes. The Denver Dream House? No. This is how they sell it? You could win a Denver Dream House? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, in the 14 years they've been putting on this raffle, no one has won a house. 
It's no, the, how does Denver, that work? Yeah, that feels <laughs> exactly. uh, shady. It sounds super shady. But the way it works is, according to Marshall, is they have in the fine print, they only have to give away the house if they sell a certain number of tickets. And they've never sold that many tickets in the history of the raffle. Does this house exist? Because I'm also thinking about the real estate market, Paul, right? Real estate market 2023, real estate market what? 1999? Yeah, Denver Dream House is just or, like uh, a house. Uh, <laughs> One bedroom or, or just, something, I, I don't know. It's just like that, uh, Fort Well, it, whatever. Okay, 2010, that seems very different. In co- Is there just an empty house sitting somewhere? I Cherry don't Hills know. or something? That's kind of fun to imagine, though, waiting for somebody. I do love abandoned places. I am one of those weirdos that enjoys those abandoned They're places nice. online sure. kind of thing. Like, have yeah. you ever seen Mike Tyson's abandoned mansion in the middle of the midwest he used to have like a weird zoo so there's all these animals it's it but this is what i'm thinking of if it's if it's a house that's been sitting empty for 14 years is it now just an abandoned place i don't know so what what is the reasoning for having a raffle every year for 14 years offering a dream home and never awarding a dream home well i mean they just don't it does. I think it's just because the, the way the money works. You know, they're they're trying right. to raise money for this charity. They're also trying to you know pay for their own expenses. I don't know if I have a better ex- explanation Maybe for why the goal, like, or the prize is too big for what they're trying to accomplish. Like, maybe just giving away a car. I was going to say some Boy Scout tiny cookies. Home. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I really enjoy some Thin Mints. Girl Scout cookies. Yes, I just just ordered some online from my favorite Girl Scout trooper Lydia in Arizona. Shout out, Lydia. <laughs> but um, that's that's kind of a bummer. I, I love this is a Marshall Zellinger story. I love that he went and dug That's around. great reporting. But no one's won the house. That's crazy. Uh, well, if you know what happened to the house or you know where the house is, let us know. <laughs> is it abandoned? I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Shannon, you ready? I am. Go for it. Okay. My school flooded. Uh, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson High School flooded. And started with a urinal, as most things do. Um, <laughs> and it had it had been said, this urinal doesn't work. It's a hazard. It had like two flags on it, but DPS, working as fast as it could, can get to it in time. And it exploded. <gasps> um, it was one of the ones on the top level. And so it does as gravity does. And it... <laughs> F- filled, filled, your filled, school filled with our water. school with water. All We're talking like the whole school. I'm I'm talking about like the West Wing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the unfortunate Miss Roush's room was five inches deep, pretty consistently <gasps> in in sewer water that does not smell very good. Oh. Um, but unfortunately, also got to the Wi-Fi, like the Wi-Fi communicator. Pieces, the crucial stuff. The crucial stuff. That yeah, that's yeah. not good. Now, you would need to send an email to your students saying, hey, the Don't school's school. flooded, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, which was kind of interesting because I'm a senior. I got my first and second period off, which means I had a leisurely morning and third period comes around. I'm at school. It's 910. I was going to be on time to my English class for the first time in the month <laughs> and uh, no one was there. There were no cars there. So I was like, oh, is it senior ditch day? I, I don't know. I'm still going to go to school. I'm a good student. Uh, but I was like, let me call my friend just to make sure like there hasn't been anything shady going on. Because you didn't get a usual notice from no. the school is what you're saying. Like there was no email yes. out like school's closed. You get there. No one's there. Uh-huh. It I just didn't, feels a little apocalyptic. It, it really did. Yeah. I was like, did I wake up on a Saturday by accident and go to school? Um, <laughs> but admin's cars will still were still there. The teacher's cars were still there. So I was like, okay, this is odd. I called my friend. She was like, oh, yeah, you can go home. The school flooded. I was like, okay. I called my mom. I said, oh, mom, I'm going home. The school flooded. And she said, I did not I did not get an email saying that that's true. Where did you hear this? Uh, I said, well, from basically the front door being locked. kind of <laughs> locked and there was no one in there. Um, uh, so my teachers were still stuck in the school because uh, you can't call a, a flood day. You can't have a snow day just because you want a snow day. You can't there's just protocol. There's protocol that you have to, to go through. Sure. Yeah. So our assistant principals, uh, Ms. Hamill and Mr. Poole, were trying to get in contact with someone from DPS who said, hey, can you please excuse like the absences? Can we call off a day of school? Because 
there's sewage water about five inches thick and we're trying to get it out of the school as quick as possible. And the response was no. The response was nope. All of your students go to school. And he was like, well, we cannot do that. There is sewage water everywhere. The school is a biohazard site. The school <laughs> is a little bit biohazardy, so we can't <laughs> teach math today. Um, and so a lot of miscommunication, but ultimately the teachers had to stay and the students all left. And then, oh, it's a wild day. It's a wild day. About probably 1.50, there was a lockdown. And the lockdown was basically caused by a woman at a 7-Eleven who had five... Nearby. Nearby. This is real nearby. This is where I go to get my morning horchata if I feel like it and my Takis as the Gen Zs do. Um, <laughs> so there was a, a situation at the 7-Eleven. Yes. That caused the lockdown. That caused the lockdown. Of the teachers. Of the teachers. Who were trapped in the sewage. Who were trapped in the sewage. Filled school. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. And this did not make the it's news. A crazy day. And this has not made the news yet. Uh, maybe it will in the next few days. Um, <laughs> you might have just broken the story here on City you Guest, Denver, Shana. <laughs> this is true journalism right here. You're doing it. Shana St. Far with the breaking news. There was a flooded school. A lady who had five guns tried to hijack six cars oh. <laughs> and failed to hijack five of them, hijack the sixth, and then uh, was detained. Um <laughs> That's the story. Wild day in Southeast Dang. Denver. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad wow. you brought us that story. <laughs> Holy cow. Of course. That flood sounds like a mess. <laughs> it is. It's still being cleaned up and taken care of. There Ooh. are classes in the library. I hope it's not too stinky for you guys. Oh, it's it, the math department is a little stinky. It's a little stinky. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's move on. Bree, give us our last underreported or overlooked story of the week. Uh, we finally got a Jokic mural. Okay. So, uh, this I'm sorry, is a what? Yoke, uh, Nikola Jokic, Denver Nuggets. Oh, yes. Star, MVP, multiple MVP. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, uh, someone started a petition, over 500 people signed, uh, asking the city of Denver and Governor Polis for a mural of Jokic. It felt, <laughs> how do we have all these murals all over the city and we don't have one? Thomas Mitchell at Westward reported this, uh, and we finally got one thanks to Detour. So oh. anyone's familiar with a detour mural, he does these beautiful portraits that are colorful. I think Thomas Mitchell described it as like sherbet colored. So it's mm -hmm. like the, the rainbow of colors behind it. It's a beautiful mural. It's at uh, 24th and Curtis. If you want to go check it out, it is on a garage door of a building. We have a Jokic mural, but I would say we need more. Yeah. Well, he he's got to earn them. He's got to earn them. What? More yokes. Please. Please. He's going to win a championship and of these <sighs> he's MVP on awards. It. He's we working need the on big it. one. It's triple double record. Don't get me started. I think he's going to be our next Elway. You know how I feel about the Nuggets and Jokic. So thank you, Thomas Detour Evans, for putting that mural up. I'm going to drive by this weekend and check it out. I've seen pictures. It's beautiful. We could share it on our Instagram. But we finally have a Nikola Jokic mural. Very cool. Yeah. Shane, are you following the Nuggets this year? No. Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. I, I fence. Oh. How about oh, that? yeah, she's a fencer. I forgot That's this cool. about you. Oh, yeah. Um, Bri, I actually have a, a Jokic question for you. I've seen some pictures of him. I doubt this is in the mural, but he has like cuts all over his arms. What's the deal with his arms you know, and his bloody arms? Here's the deal. Bloody Paul, arms. you're a fellow extremely pale person as I am. Mm -hmm. We have our snow white tans, <laughs> mm -hmm. as does Nicola does. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, he's just one of those people that's super susceptible to bruising and cuts. It's not like, uh -huh. it's like someone bumps into him or scratches him with their nail and it bleeds. Uh -huh. So I think it's just a sensitive skin issue because I'm a similar, similar type of person. And I wish announcers in other cities who talk about Nuggets games that I may be watching uh, I may or may not be pirating from other places mm -hmm. comment on it all the time and I think they need to leave him alone. It's, well, it's an interesting thing. It's you know an what? interesting it's not thing his about fault. him. Yeah. Watch his game, okay? I hear, I hear that. It's hear great. That. Don't watch his skin turn different colors. Watch his game. Quit judging him. <laughs> Judge someone for the content of their character, not the changing color of their skin. Not their ability to get <laughs> scratched easily, Paul. <laughs> All right, Thank we're gonna we're gonna go to another uh, quick break here and come back with our weekend recommendations.
All right, and we're back. It's time for the official CityCast Denver, maybe for your weekend, as in maybe you'll see us there, because as usual, there are so many cool things happening in Denver this weekend, and we have opinions. Usually, Adrian Gonzalez rounds up his best bets in our newsletter, Hey Denver, every week, but he's out sick today. Get well soon, Adrian. So I picked out some events that I think sound interesting, (sighs) and I'm going to make you two talk about them with me. Shana, I have a Paul has questionable taste, Shana. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All if, right, Paul. If Ma- Meow Wolf is on this, I'm not interested. Ooh, You're not a Meow Wolf I wanna, person? I want a Meow Wolf hot take later. Save that. Okay. Save okay. that. Um, okay, number one. The 19th annual Boulder International Film Festival is happening this weekend, Thursday through Sunday. Two tickets you can get for $34 or a whole festival pass for $450. But the reason why I thought this was interesting is because I enjoyed the recent uh, second season of The White Lotus on HBO. Mm -hmm. And they are giving F. Murray Abraham, who is the actor who played the the eldest of the three American-Italian... Fam gentleman in that family. He was the he was the grandpa on vacation yeah. party. Lecherous grand grandpa. Yeah. I like Naughty his- Grandpa. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so they're giving him an outstanding performer of the year award on Saturday night, and there's gonna be a little interview on stage. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm a White Lotus fan. Loved the show. Yeah, it's great. So I, I'm thinking about that event. It's okay. Are there is it like indie films? That's what like, it's so like international films. I didn't recognize any films. of them. Are there going to be subtitles? Because Probably. as many Americans, I speak one language. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll keep right. that in mind. Let me hit you with number two. This one is also kind of White Lotus adjacent. It's a play that is happening right now at DCPA. It's running from February through uh, mid-March. I saw it a couple weeks ago. It's called Hotter Than Egypt. Mm. So what I'm makes gonna, it White Lotus adjacent? It's about an American couple who goes to Egypt and they get they have these tour guides who are an Egyptian couple. So it's kind of a comedy, a romantic comedy dealing with issues of like colonialism and class and race and power. Well, tell me, did you like it? Oh yeah, it was really funny. It was oh. really, really funny. I thought it had third act problems, but it was really, really <laughs> funny. Third act problems? Yeah, it should have it should have built up to a bigger conclusion, but it was a great play and I do recommend it. $25 to $70 for a ticket. What do we think? DCPA's new show, Hotter Than Egypt. I haven't been to a DCPA show in a while. It sounds pretty good. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, why not? You a theater person? Yeah, Shana? I'm a theater person. Okay. I was, I'm technically a theater kid. I was in the musical at school. Hey, that's there, awesome. There you go. Okay. Uh, I might be into it. Okay. okay. Okay, so that's a good one. Number three is, I think you say it, F Denver or maybe ETH Denver. I, I'm into it. You're there already. Okay. <laughs> You're a crypto enthusiast. <laughs> oh, it's crypto? Yeah. Oh. It's 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 20,000 web3 blockchain and crypto enthusiasts in Rhino this weekend for the main event of their annual conference. Costs $600 for admission <laughs> to the whole event, but it's the largest and longest running uh pyramid F- scheme Ethereum <laughs> event. <laughs> Some people might say that. Um, <laughs> this th- is a pyramid scheme of a price for a ticket, six hundred oh bucks for general admission. Oh. For general admission, do yeah. you get some crypto? I don't know. I don't know if they're doing that this year. I know they did that last year. You get like an NFT or something. That it was. That's when it was happening. Fifteen to twenty thousand of these enthusiasts. Again, I probably it's mentioned huge. this to you. I've been rewatching Silicon Valley. I just imagine what this looks like. I. No. Although the only enticing part, oh, it's not at the sports castle. It was last year. Last year that would have been my castle. selling point was yeah. I would get to go inside the sports castle again. So yes. Seems like Oof. a stretch for you two on that one. That's yeah. fine. I got one more. Okay. I don't have that much money in my bank account. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, Shana. Couldn't, I couldn't even actually afford to get in the door. You have to dip into your college fund to go to this f- f- nerd. F- Sorry, I need. I know. Oh, are you going? No, no. Oh, okay. No, no, I just have been very harsh on nerds on the show before, and I want to try to remedy that. Oh, I don't want to hurt people's the, feelings. Sometimes the nerds deserve it. They do, but also we need to be nice to them. Okay, you're right. Um, all right, number four, the pancakes and booze art show. This one is at the Sports Castle mm-hmm. Saturday night. eight p.m. to midnight. It's over a hundred local artists exhibiting seven hundred and fifty plus pieces of work, and but the real draw is free all you can eat pancakes. I this event has been going on for a long time, like maybe a decade and a half, and I've never been. So I don't. Here's my thing: I don't like being sticky. 
Like mm-hmm. I hate it. <laughs> I have a toddler who comes at me with sticky hands every day. It's I hate it. So I'm thinking drunk people, pancakes, art. Is that messy? It's just, it just a sticky a little messy. event. That's, that's a sticky it's event. Sticky. It's overall pretty sticky. Yeah. Though again, I may pay twenty dollars to go wander around the sports castle like the old Denver curmudgeon I am. Yeah, and that's a lot of different artists. I could see that. And of course, fun scene. local art, my favorite thing to mm-hmm. champion. If you're there, I think you could probably buy art from local artists. Mm-hmm. Please go and do that. Mm-hmm. I might. This might be my wreck. I would. I would go for the art, but. Two dollar pancakes at IHOP. I, that's the all you, you get. Can pancakes elsewhere. Yeah. All right. So overall, we've got the 19th annual Boulder International Film Fest. We've got Hotter Than Egypt at DCPA, F Denver, the crypto conference, and the Pancakes and Booze Art Show. Where are we leaning? Oh well. Also, the Pancakes and Booze Art Show is 21 and up, so Sheena can't even go. So sorry, yeah, I can't recommend that. You would have to sneak me in. And yeah, I, I, I would do. I'm that. a law-abiding citizen. Okay, so off we can- the record, <laughs> I would do that. Don't tell your parents that. No, no. I mean, I, I don't drink. To be fair, yeah. So I would. That would not be the problem. But no, mm-hmm. I would say uh, because of that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm, not that one. I'm going to go with hotter than Egypt. You're feeling hotter than Egypt? I'm also feeling hotter than Egypt. Oh, heck yeah. I made the pitch. I think hotter than Egypt is the one. Yeah, I think... That's our wreck. I I really like a good like theater show. In school, we're reading Shakespeare. I want something a little more modern. This is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, hotter than Egypt at the DCPA is our official maybe for your weekend as in maybe you'll see us there Mm. but there's way more where that came from we've got plenty more recommendations in our newsletter hey denver which you can subscribe to right now by texting denver to 66866 brie shana thanks so much for being here thank you for having me thanks paul thanks shana for joining us this was so fun so fun And that's all for today here on CityCast Denver. Our producers this week were me, Paul Caroli, J.D. Lopez, Lizzie Goldsmith, and Aaron O'Toole. Adrian Gonzalez writes our morning newsletter, Hey Denver. Bree Davies is our host. Our music is by Los Mocachetes, with additional mixing by Tyler Lindgren. If you haven't already, subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on Twitter, at CityCast Denver, and tell Sean Foreman and Nathaniel Mott about us the next time you see them. Maybe tonight at their big 303-day show. You can sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Denver, by texting Denver to 66866 and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. See you next week. Broadway is probably the closest I get to downtown. I go thrifting. Sure. I do the normal Gen Z thing. Mm. I get a cup of coffee. I get a matcha. Yeah. Pair yeah. of baggy pants. Pair of baggy pants. That's my understanding of what Gen Z likes. Those Gen oh, Zers yeah. love those baggy pants. Oh, Single yeah. Give me some androgynous pants. pants. I love those. <laughs> oh, man, I was so shocked to see that those were back in style. That was, mm-hmm. uh, that's that was how you a know you're very old, Paul. Yeah, that's getting older. And it's <laughs> yeah. good. It's, it's a great feeling. I lived through the first season of Jankos and large raver pants. And <laughs> oh, yeah. They're back again.